What is up everybody, welcome back to another episode of RJ's Reviews, I where I go and talk about something that, um, yeah, does a thing. Today we're talking about um, the Miniware DS212 Oscilloscope, it's it's a tiny oscilloscope, what more can I say, it costs about $100 and, I mean, it's, from what I've heard, it's pretty good at its job, it's a bit limited, but what, do you, what more can you expect for $100? So... Yeah, let's take a bit of a look at it. Starting out with the box, there are some there are some of these little pull tab things down here, you know. Pretty typical. I've already cut them because I've already kind of played around with the scope a bit. Um, there's the box. Um, you get a you get a pretty you get a pretty okay looking little safety instructions t pamphlet thing. Um, Talks about something about the scope. Mostly some basic stuff. It's definitely a, an abridged version of this manual, which is huge and chunky. It's a really good manual from what I've read of it. Of course, it's available both in Chinese and English. Um, the Chinese is upside down and the English is right side up. 22 pages, full color. Pretty good, actually. Um, talks about everything about the scope so you yeah, know quite a lot so quite a lot for the money and a little USB cable for charging the thing and also to get the data off of it from the small bits of storage that it has because yes this is a digital storage oscilloscope so it could store things on it um, so basically just some basic images some basic readings and all that kind of stuff so let's get this, um, so let's get this, um, protective cover peeled off. Let's say get myself a shot. And that, well, that came out real nice. All right, so yeah, this is the scope itself. Now the screen is 2.8 inches, it's TFT, it's, if I could get it in shot and in focus here, it's it's not really a touch screen, but for navigation you have these little these little encoder wheel things on the sides and the top here. There's this little switch for turning it off and on, like always. And there's a run stop button just so you could hold out on one thing. There's your probe inputs and outputs. You got your two channels here and then your output. Um bit limited because it only has a, as I've already mentioned, it only supports up to 40 volts as an input, but um, it also only goes up to about 1 megahertz for frequency, so don't expect to be doing anything like RF related or anything like that. Maybe just some basic stuff with Arduinos or whatever you... Uh, moving on further down in the box, we have all of the probes and all of the stuff that like comes with that. You get two probes, um, and these are, of course, of the mini B and C variety. One concern I do have is finding finding spare probes or finding probes that are of the same type, because as I've mentioned, it only comes with two, and in the event that someone needs to use, that you need to use. Um, three probes, so you have one for the function generator output. Um, that might become a bit of a problem. Um, got the ground plugs, for, you got the ground clips for these. Um, pretty standard. Um, and then the little, and then a little attachment to make them into those grabber leads. Um, also we get some, we get a random hex key I think this is to open up the actual scope itself because this isn't this is a quote unquote open source design so you get to open it up and you get little probe organizer things where you know you get to choose what color they are and what kind of what they kind of relative to what they appear on the scope itself um so yeah now even though this scope does have a 40 volt voltage limit, um, you can use 
you can use the voltage divider on here which makes it support up to 400 volts because it has a times 10 setting. I'm going to leave it on times 1 for the purposes of this test because that's all I got which is because I've got most of my tests under 40 volts. Alright so for testing I have built a simple 555 oscillator. Um, it's about in the audio range. Um, so it should be well under the 100 megahertz um, or the 1 megahertz um, that this thing can run at. And to show what frequency it is I've got the multimeter out here and yeah let's get that. Alright so powering up the scope for the first time you get you get a simple beep and you get the UI itself. Um, this is mostly it. Um, you could move all these by doing some stuff, but you know. So you do get the ability to do quite a lot of things. So even though this doesn't have a physical third channel, you get to do channel C, which has the ability to do math. So if you have something on channel A and one on and something on channel B, you could do um you could actually have it do math and show what it is that it's doing. Can't get it to focus in right, so I can't really show much about it. Also the menus aren't really don't really stay for a bit, but that's fine by me I guess. In fact if I go back to that, you also get things like time base. Um if you want to quickly modify something you can always you can always use that to just quickly change the value if it's like a single value thing like time base you know we'll keep it back on 20 microseconds so yeah so yeah let's um hook it in all right so we're in the thing as you can see i turned on the channel c math thing I don't, you don't really need to do this because, um, because I have, because channel B has nothing, so it's just a direct clone of what's on, on the first channel. Um, if we can kind of zoom in a little bit, um, I can't really, it's not really easy to see, but it has the frequency counter down there, 906 hertz, which is about in line with the frequency counter of my multimeter. So that's something that's pretty good, um, but yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Um, you don't really have to be so concerned about um, about how grounding is unless you're using the output on the actual scope itself, um, because you know this is on this is battery powered, so unless you're charging it. You can, you might have to use the ground plug. Um, you might have to plug in the ground thing. Um, the ground thing takes a bit of effort to, to clip in, but it clips in like that. Um, so let's go ahead and increase the frequency on the test build. And as you can see, goes up. And yep. And we're getting down there, 2.42 kilohertz. Yeah, the Anang's kind of going around the 1.7 to 2 kilohertz mark for some reason. I don't know, it's... I mean, 555 oscillators are very unstable by design because of how old they are. Because of how old the design is, they aren't that temperature stable, so... Or stable for that matter. Um, I, I bet if I hooked an audio out onto these things, you'd... It would just, it would, there would be a bit of like a hint of randomness to the frequency that these things are running at. Um, so, imaginably, yeah, that works pretty okay, I guess. Um, you could see things. If you don't, if you want to kind of stop and pause on it, you can do that. Um, I believe you can change the time base on these but it's gonna you're gonna have to wait you're gonna have to reshoot and there you go you can see the actual wave itself we're at a very low we're at a very high frequency now we're actually at a low frequency but there you go you can actually see the wave it's a little 
Yeah, you can see it. It's pretty good looking. The weird thing that I've noticed is that with with ground or not, you do have a you do have to run it at a very low setting for voltage. Um, for some reason, this is on the 20 millivolts range. When um, when I did the measurement with the multimeter, it was like somewhere like around six or seven volts typically, because you know, 555 oscillators they usually are usually the output is usually about two volts lower than supply. Sometimes I think, from what I've read up on it, it's like that. But yeah, otherwise it's pretty accurate now. Um, now that the anang's kind of weighed in on itself, it's around 1.6 kilohertz and this is saying around 1.65 kilohertz so it's pretty accurate um it says the voltage is around plus or minus 120 millivolts um you know pretty normal um let's just turn off channel c for once by going into it it's a bit i will say the menu system where it uses the two side encoders is a little odd but um, yeah, it's a little bit of menu diving. Um, I think I might know what, I think I might have an idea of what kind of... Right, so since Miniware and E-Design, which is a company that made it, um, literally encourages it to be kind of taken apart. I mean, they even supply you with the hex key to take it apart with, I believe. <laughs> Let's kind of take a bit of a tiny gander on the inside of this thing. Alright, so after removing the back, we get to see at least a quite a bit of things, so you get to see the output, you get to see the t three channels, um, or the one output channel and the two inputs, you can see which ones are the inputs and the outputs, you know, by just simply looking. And um, yeah, so you've got the two ADCs for the, for the inputs, just to, you know, do the input. You've also got the battery, which has some tape funnily enough, and um, if we turn it over, it's a 500 milliamp hour battery, so it's not too big, it'll probably get you through a lot of things, and uh, let's see if we can get to the other side. Alright, so here we are on the other side of the scope, um, of the PCB for the scope, and um, yeah, very simple, the, s the main controller that's behind all this is a simple STM32 chip. Pretty common. I mean, there's many a cheap 3D printer that I've seen with these STM32s. Pretty good as a little CPU. I'm, I'm at least not too bad that it's in a scope. Um, you get a. You also get, I believe, it is a DAC for the for the um, generator output. We'll test that after we get it back together. Now we've got our little tiny little trace here to go down to the to go down to the two controls so you got your power on off switch on there and your two things underneath that is the display which we will not go and take out and um, yeah even the little USB charging circuitry if I can but yeah underneath here over on this side of the board you get a you get the two um, if I can just get it to get in there um, we can just you can see the two encoders for the menus and um, USB charge circuitry along with the USB thing and that goes all the way down to the STM as well as our little on off switch and there's the little hold button all the way down there. Alright let's get this thing back together. Alright so now that we're all back on now that everything's all back together and stuff um, um yeah I'm going to say one thing about this though, it's a pretty cool scope, I mean considering the fact that it's, well, open source is evidenced by the Creative Commons logo and the fact that they literally give you the tools to open it, it's pretty good. Now let's just test the little function generator output on it um, by powering it on again, and yeah, it's, and it's pretty, and we'll just see if we can get that to go and do now, one thing I did forget to mention is that these buttons, these um, encoders are also buttons, so you get to click on them, and you get things like that. So, on page three, you get controls for, like, wave out option, which is what we need, 
10 kilohertz square duty cycle of 50% only available to square waves imaginably so if we hook it to the output we got a square wave all right to make it easier on myself I've hooked the two probes together you could do this other ways like using a resistor is what I've seen um, or using just a jumper wire for a breadboard so let's kind of scroll through our options here so you get square you get sine and triangle um, frequency you get 5 kilohertz to 1 500 hertz you get quite a few um, in fact let's go back out to page one and um, let's just set our time base a bit to a bit longer so about five milliseconds so the frame rate kind of starts to suffer at these lower frequencies but imaginably um, yeah so go to sawtooth you know you got all these wave options and um, we could go for and there's like a ton of them like so square sine triangle and sawtooth are your four options and we could scroll down frequency bring that to about now this maxes out at 10 kilohertz so yeah so let's go back to time base and um Set it to 0.1 millisecond. And if we go to wave out option and then set it back to um, square, we're able to, that's the only time we're able to select our duty cycle. So we can make our PWM as low as 10%, but then we can make it as high as 90% because at 100% it's just DC voltage and at 0% it's just nothing. So, so yeah, pretty cool I'd say. And it is a little off, but yeah. Otherwise it defaults back if you change the wave a bit. So yeah. Um, there's an about section. It's, it's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely a pretty good scope. Um, you do have some stuff like a basic file manager, which we have. Um, but basically, what this file manager lets us do is it lets us do a save. So we're going to save it as a CSV. Um, you can also save it as an SVG file for some reason, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, and a bitmap. I mean, I'm not surprised that it's it's not that it's not that bad actually. Um, it, I mean, this is the same company that's insane enough to make a soldering iron powered off a of USB. Um, so I am pretty pretty happy with this scope. It works out pretty well. It's it's a nice portable scope you get to do some things with it and it's very open source you can you could probably make your own mods of it you can probably even make your own firmware if this isn't that great but it's got enough to get you started um, if you need a scope this is in definitely in a desert island situation pretty good um, it's definitely a good one um, but yeah for the hundred that it costs I'm not too mad at it um so yeah I'm gonna give this a good 9.5 out of 10 I might even give it a 10 out of 10 because of because I mean the only thing that's really wrong with it is the fact that it takes a bit of getting used to on that and the file management and figuring out where if you've actually saved an image or anything like that is um yeah you know it's a little hard to find out some things are pretty easy and conveniently there, like the stop and start function. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. If you like what you saw, well, like and subscribe. I don't know how much I'm going to do videos about, I don't know how many test review, test equipment reviews I'm going to be doing that much on this channel. But yeah, also, funny thing is, 
last video filmed in 2021. So yeah. But anyways, that's gonna be it for today's video. And bye.